Welcome back everyone and in today's video we're going to go over how a company is now suing Intelligent Entertainment and also Tommy Tallarico. I first learned about this this morning from watching a video from Goose. I'll link his video in the description and I also read it on the subreddit, the Intellivision underscore Amico subreddit and we also talked about it in the Discord and I also put a link in the Discord for people who haven't joined it yet. It always has great conversation about Intellivision. So in this court document I'll place on the screen here, it has the Amir Equipment Finance as the plaintiffs versus Intelligent Entertainment LLC and Thomas Andrew Tallarico as the defendants. And what they are doing is suing for a sum of money. And it says for complaint for money, breach of written equipment, breach of personal guarantee, open book account, account stated, demand exceeds $110,252.60. So it's quite a bit of chunk of change there. And uh, we won't read every single part. You can pause the screen and read the, the document if you want to know every single detail. But it basically says that at the time of the, the agreement between the two companies, the Intellivision was a legit legal running company in the state of California. And the next little section talks about how they may update this court document with uh, proper names. There's so they're using fictitious names just temporarily, just until they find out the, the real names to, to use. So the document is a live document. But the interesting part says, number six, on or about February 26, 2021, plaintiff and defendant Intelligent Entertainment LLC, here and after referred to as defendant, entered into a written equipment finance agreement, here and referred to as agreement, with plaintiff, wherein plaintiff agreed to finance equipment as set forth in detail in the Schedule A collateral to the agreement. Defendant agreed to pay plaintiff $3,015.83 for 60 months, so five years, together with applicable fees and taxes. A true and correct copy of the agreement with Schedule A is attached. So for Part 7, it just says that Intellivision had put up collateral and that how the Amur Equipment Finance Company, or whatever they're called, uh, retains the collateral and that they can use it in case that Intellivision defaults on their loan, which they did. And so for part nine, on or about July 15th, 2022, defendant defaulted under the terms of the agreement by failing to make the monthly payment, then due and owing. So just this past summer, and that's about when everyone was being laid off. And it's kind of the writing was in the on the wall that everything was over at that point. So the, this is where it gets kind of interesting. So it says, the terms of the agreement provide that in the event of the defendant's default, plaintiff may elect to declare the entire unpaid balance immediately due and payable. Plaintiff has so elected despite plaintiff's demand for payment. Defendant has failed and refused and continued to fail and refuse to pay said balance or any part thereof. Accordingly, there is now due owing and unpaid from the defendant and each of them to plaintiff the principal sum of $139,651.28 together with interest thereon at the rate of 18% per annum from date of default. It's a pretty hefty uh, <laughs> sum, and also that interest rate is crazy high. Pursuant to the terms of the agreement and due to the default defendant's default, plaintiff repossessed and sold the collateral. Defendants are entitled to a credit for the net sale proceeds in the amount of $5,544.48. So whatever they had for collateral, they got about five and a half grand. Pursuant to the terms of the agreement, defendants are entitled to a credit of 5.29% of the net present value discount in the amount of $23,854.20. According, there is now due owing and unpaid from defendant to plaintiff under agreement $110,252.60 together with interest thereon the rate of 18% per annum for the date of default according to proof of the trial. The agreement also provides for the payment for reasonable Attorney fees should legal action be instituted to enforce the payment thereof. Plaintiff has re retained the law office of, and then it has the, the lawyer's name. So it looks like they're on the hook for $110,000 plus the 18% uh, interest rate and then all the legal fees. That's a lot of uh, money there. And now this is where it gets really good. It says, second cause of action, breach of personal guarantee against defendants Thomas Andrew Tallarico, an individual, and Doe's 1120. That, that's the, the other people, but they just don't have the names yet, so that's why they have John Doe's. 
so it says here to induce plaintiff to enter into agreement and furnish the collateral to defendant on or about February 26, 2021, defendant Thomas Andrew Tallarico, an individual herein after guarantor defendant or defendant executed a personal guarantee in favor of the plaintiff, which is attached here to as part of the exhibit one agreement in, incorporated herein by this reference as though fully set forth. And what that is, and I can't believe he would do this, says a personal, I'll put up the definition of a, what a guarantor defendant or guarantee, personal guarantee means. A personal guarantee is just what it sounds like. It gives you lender, gives your lender the right to pursue your, the guarantor's personal assets if your business defaults on a business loan. So he signed off to get this loan that they can come after his own assets. Hmm. <laughs> wonder, now it's starting to get a little, little fishy here. Is it a coincidence that before that the, these, this company sued that a certain Tommy sold a bunch of his assets mysteriously to people on that auction? Uh, you know, remember I had that video showing that his, his uh, beloved toys, like those uh, old consoles that he had, were all sold to somebody who suspiciously had the, the, you know, the same email outline of Tommy Tallarico. I wonder, he wouldn't be hiding his assets, would he? Hmm. Just scratching my chin right now, in case you didn't know. Very interesting. Either way, it looks like they can come after Tommy himself and other individuals. And uh, I wonder if Nick Richards and Phil Adam or whoever else, I wonder if, they, if they're going to point the finger to Tommy since, you know, he signed on the, on the dotted line himself. So, continuing on, it says, accordingly, accordingly, there is now due owing unpaid from the guarantor defendant to the plaintiff the principal amount of 110000 together with the interest thereon. So, the guarantor defendant is, as it just stated right above there, is Tommy Tallarico. Because <laughs> the company itself, Intelligent Amico, or whatever it's called, LLC, that's, that's done. That's pretty much toast. So, they're going to come after Tommy now. That's, that's a lot of money. By virtue of the above, guarantor defendant is in debt to plaintiff in the sum of, and then the same sum, 110000 with the interest rate. And so basically, what it's saying here is because the company appears to be no longer in business, they have cause of action and they, they can legally come after, they believe they can legally come after Tommy Tallarico. So I thought I'd bring this up. This is pretty interesting. This is, the, this is just the beginning. So this is just one company here. So I'd, I'd be really curious to know what the principal sum of 139000 what did they actually finance? Because it'd be really, really bad if it was this was just for office equipment, so the desk, uh, the computers, monitors, chairs, and all that stuff. Mainly because the, the office was, the, first of all, they paid a, a ton of money to rent out that office space, but it was, it was left empty for so long during the COVID stuff. Why would they spend so much money? That it just it wouldn't surprise me because I've worked in offices and I saw how I see how expensive equipment is. Like for example, currently in my office I'm sitting on a three thousand dollar chair, which seems like it's not much different from the two hundred dollar chair I can buy at Staples myself. It just it seems like it'd be a waste of money or bad usage of money for a startup company trying to get themselves off the ground. Another idea or another thought I had was maybe this was for the equipment for those uh, robots that they bought for the controllers. Remember they had a video a long time ago where they had a robot pressing a button and also a tumbler and a battery charging equipment. It seems more li likely that those equipment would you would need a loan for it because I, I assume those equipment are expensive. My last idea would be just that maybe it was servers. They bought some cheaper servers. And that also raises a, a question of if that was the case, were they planning to use their own servers as the back end for Intellivision? Because that would be super dangerous, and dangerous meaning like unsafe. Who knows? It'd be interesting to get a further breakdown of what they had financed and what they put up for collateral. Who knows? Maybe somebody else will unearth that info later. And I forgot to mention earlier, this complaint was filed on December 12th of 2022. And they have a court date set or a hearing for July 13th of 2023. So seven more months away. We'll see if uh, Tommy ha even ha 
has enough money to retain his 20 lawyers on staff to help him fight this company, but either way, I thought this video would be an interesting one for you guys to check out. Let me know what you think in the comments, and maybe this, this might just be the first one in a long series of further companies suing Intelligence slash Tommy Tallarico. Who knows if any other companies or developers had breaches of uh, agreements that are breached. Stay tuned. If there is, I'll let you guys know. So until the next one, have a good one.